Welcome to Geek Beacon, where we got that geek in you be seeking. I'm Lenny. Hi, I'm Professor Kaiju. <laughs> you are so company. stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, uh, I've i been working really hard for uh, my Geek Beacon friends today, and I have to say, they're really amazing people, especially that recliner writer. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you, uh, thank you, Professor Kaiju. Uh, I'm a writer, and I, I really appreciate that. Uh, we, we're really working hard here at uh, Geek Beacon, and we got that geek in UBC. All right, oh, guys. Oh, 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 good one, Recline Rider. Oh, oh, Y'all are so oh, oh, stupid. Oh, oh, oh Mary anyway. Kaiju, Mary Kaiju. Mary oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Anyway, so yes, guys, we have another guest feature with Professor Kaiju today, and we are coming at y'all with another movie review. This time, we've hit the theaters, and we're going to be reviewing Pacific Rim uh, Uprising. Uprising. And so, if you want to hear about that shit show, stay tuned. Okay, so yeah, what did you guys, what was you guys overall first impression of the movie? I'm going to be fair, it wasn't a shit show guys, it just wasn't good, Um, it was okay, from uh, in my opinion. (laughs) Well, uh, it was a gross and expected disappointment from the moment (laughs) I sat my ass down in the theater. Stop. Uh, who told them to make another Transformers movie? Power Rangers is what someone I was watching saying. Either way, it was the most generic, shittiest, unimaginative, flawed movie Dude, I've seen. It was not that bad, and it should and it destroyed something that I was really hoping for. Yeah, I feel like you know what? In the previous uh, podcast, Professor Kaiju once said that. Oh, you know, I felt uh, that way about Godzilla, the newest one. This is my Godzilla because it had potential to be something and it failed. It <laughs> failed fucking miserably. It, it didn't completely fail. It, it did have some redeeming factors, bro. It was boring. It was derivative of the fucking first one and every other giant uh, robot movie, i.e. Transformers, i.e. fucking Power Rangers. Gundam. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Be gone. <laughs> How dare you blaspheme. They Shut wish up. they wish they was fucking Gundam. Even even to the point where they had that cool ass Gundam statue in there and the Gundam statue was looking down on them and saying, "Nah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you can nah. never be me." <laughs> well, think thanks. <laughs> what was your uh Initial thoughts on it before we get all the way into it here, Professor Kaiju. Pacific Rim Uprising, huh? more like Pacific Rim Upchucking. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? He <laughs> <laughs> sure uh, is. Okay. Yuck, yuck. Okay, oh, no, dude. but um, seriously, uh, I don't feel as heavily as Carcillus because I honestly didn't have much expectation for this movie when walking in. Did um, you see the first one? <laughs> oh, yeah, I saw the first one, which... Uh, I really did like, like, I wasn't sure what to expect from that movie, and I thought it really, I need to watch it again, I mm-hmm. especially want to watch it again now after seeing this, but, um, I thought Pacific Rim 2, like, I, it did as well as about, like, it did as well as I hoped it would do for being a sequel, for being, like, not directly handled by Guillermo del Toro, like, he put a lot of passion into the first one, and I kind of knew this was like, uh, we got the Pacific Rim name slapped on this movie, you know. There's a lot of nice, there's a lot of good elements to the movie. They just didn't do a lot with them. Right. Like, there's a lot of stuff they could have done that I think would have been a lot better and would have cleaned up the movie and made it a lot, not as good as the first one, of course, but still a good movie. But I thought, eh, it's, it's okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh yeah. Well, um, I didn't. Well, I didn't think that um, there was anything to be like 
cleaned up or anything like that. I do feel like they could have put a lot of focus in different places um, that they chose not to. But overall, I did not hate the movie. I thought it was extremely underwhelming, but it wasn't a terrible movie. It's just like, it just wasn't as good as the first one. Like, I was fresh off of the first one because I was very, we very late. Was okay. fresh off the first one. Oh, okay. We had the very, we had the, uh, the opportunity to actually go in this fresh. We didn't have like uh, two years of worth of hype after seeing the first one. Yeah. We saw it like a month prior. Yeah. So, considering when I saw the first one, I was like, yes, this is amazing. Mm-hmm. Going into this one, it was great. As disappointing as I kind of was hoping it wouldn't be, considering that uh, um, Del Toro was not helming the movie by being its director, and I said, because once I heard that he wasn't <laughs> the director, I was like, oh, oh, man. <laughs> Don't I think yeah. that that's what, what what everyone was feeling, except me, because I feel like you know, there, I'm open minded, like I'm pretty easy to please in terms of movies and everything like that. I just take it for what it is most of the time. Um, but I definitely feel like uh, it was a missed opportunity. I feel- and if they knew that he was such a strong influence on the movie and a lot of people, you know, loved that movie specifically for him, they should have really went out of their way to try to get him back. I feel- it's like but- um, them trying to make the next Black Panther movie without uh, Googler. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I feel but it's like... also hard to get an, an Emmy award winning director now since he was, you know, he made a uh, fuck a fish guy. I mean, uh, shape of water. Wow. I thought, I thought, I thought, I, I thought that was an Oscar nominated movie. I'm sorry. Not whatever. They're because all because Emmys, Emmys, Emmys is more TV. <laughs> Oscar is like more big time. Cause that's what I, okay, honestly, I, that's what I was, I I was, that's what I was honestly, they were say. Oscar nominated. That's what I was going to say. Uh, Professor Gadget, I was like, yeah, he went from a, uh, an Oscar-nominated dude. I don't, I don't remember if he won the Oscar, but he was part of it to a guy who directed Spartacus, um, the TV show from, uh, what, Stars? But I have no idea. I'm not familiar with the show. Yeah, but it's like, it was it was a popular show, but that's not a here or there. Uh, so I'm, I really want to get into this. Uh, so how are we gonna do? It? Are we gonna like go scene for scene, or are we gonna just go to what we like and what we don't I mean, like? Because I'm we're about just to gonna tear go. This movie apart. <laughs> we're just gonna go over a, a very, very, very quick summary of what the movie was about, and then we can get into the positives. And let's start with the negatives, and then end with the positives because <laughs> that's the type of people we I, are. <laughs> I want to do. This. I'm gonna give the summary, man. Let me do it. Why? Because you're you're going in from a very negative perspective. I want to be as objective as I possible. I want to go in at a hilarious perspective. Okay, go ahead. Then. <laughs> All right. So, the movie takes place like years after the first movie, after the heroicism of uh, you know Charlie Ham's character and uh, Mako uh, character and. A, and uh, Prescott's the father of the main character's characters stealing off the actual hole in the Pacific Rim to the other dimension. And the world is just picking up the pieces and pretty much nobody really needs Jaegers, but they're pretty much a ceremonious type of thing. Yeah, basically a lot of people, they don't need them because their monsters are not, the kaiju are no longer, the gates closed, so there are no more kaiju. Um, so they have a group, uh, uh, army, if you will, that is preparing for just in case. And then they have a lot of people in the abandoned cities, uh, that basically had the backlash from the actual fight, uh, and was destroyed. They have like individuals trying to get parts from kaiju and steal parts from the Jaegers and they're building and doing illegal shit. The person who they focus on is so-and-so's son. Go on. You might as well. Go ahead. Okay. Prescott. Prescott's son. And this is the guy who's in the Star Wars movie. Jake Prescott. 
John Boyega. Okay. The actor who plays Jake Prescott, the son of uh, uh, Idris Elba's character in the first movie. Yeah. All right. So that's the guy, the Star Wars movie guy. He's the lead character in this. It starts with him um, showing the fact that he is, you know, living that life, doing all of this illegal shit for monies and for trading like cars for like Oreos and shit like that. He's a gutter punk. <laughs> yeah, he's a gutter punk. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, okay. And he's going on this heist. And the heist goes awry. Someone steals the part before he can. He tracks the part down. And it's this girl who built a little mini Jaeger. <clears throat> but the police interfered and arrested them both. They were both saved by Mako, <clears throat> who... Um, is like his sister, I guess. His stepsister, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, not stepsister. Adopted, adopted sister. sister. So she takes him and the little girl back to their base, and they're trying to train her to be a pilot. Her name is Amara. M- what? Amara. Amara. Yeah. And they're trying to train Amara to be a pilot, which is the girl who built her own Jaeger, and they want him to. Stop being a little brat, basically. Yeah, they had a whole chase scene in the first scene with her building her little shitty Jaeger. It was cute. It was like, yeah, he was a, he was a, he basically he was a, uh, like I said, a gutter punk trying to make a deal to rob a old, uh, was it abandoned base yeah. that they used to have to make Jaegers, and it turns out that she stole it first. Yeah, he tracks her down and finds her at her shop where she was finishing up her little. Uh, yeah, I believe called Scudder or Scuttle or whatever the fuck. Scrapper. Is. There it Scrapper. is. Scrapper. Scrapper. <laughs> the name that uh, is right, right on the nose. A piece of scrap. Wow. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, they had this whole chase scene where um, pretty much uh, Scott Eastwood's uh, character, Nate Lambert, pretty much captures them. And that's how they ended up at the base. Go ahead. Okay. So at base, <clears throat> everyone falls into line. Um, she gets put in with all the other little kids. There are some who are welcoming and others who are not. And he is being an emotional brat. Meanwhile, the guy, what's the scientist's name from the last one? Um, was it Gallup? Uh, Herman Gallup, uh, Dr. <clears throat> Herman Gallup. I don't remember. Let's see. His name is very hard to know. <clears throat> All right, yeah, Herman Gottlieb. Um, he is trying to yeah, the one. come up with. He's developing the new technology, and to make him to so they can uh, travel faster with an afterburner. Yeah, the other guy though, um, obviously is. Arriving on scene because Dr. they're related to each other. Doctor Dr. News, uh, Newton uh, Geisler. Okay, Doctor Newton is they're arriving not, to the scene, looking like a douchebag. No, I'm saying when you think of the movie, you think about those two. Oh, okay, because there's really <clears throat> weird questionable family lineages. Oh, no, <laughs> so you gotta, I don't think they're related. You gotta, you gotta be clear that they're not related. <laughs> you know, because Mako is related to John Boyega's character. Clearly, there's no family resemblance. So. Okay. Yeah. So, basically, he comes there and he's like, dude, forget all that. We got this new thing where the Jaegers can be autopiloted. And, and, <laughs> and they're like, wait, what? Yeah, they were built by the Shao Corporation, the Chinese uh, corporation that's building the They're Chinese. Korean. No, they're Chinese. They're tr- Chinese? No. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. They are Chinese. That's why I was like saying, man, <laughs> they're going to get a lot of uh, money uh, foreign. Bro, and when we did. went to the movies. They made their money back foreignly. They really did bad domestically. Yeah. I'm... When we went to the movies, though, there was nothing but Asians there. Like, <laughs> and then there was like a whole roll in the back roll of black kids, but... Everyone else was Asian, <laughs> which I'm like, I'm surprised. Not really. You were not? Why? Because it was just like, 
not even a mix. Like, it was just, like, straight, just Asians. I mean, the movie, the, what the movie's based It on. had a lot of Chinese in the movie. Mandarin, though. So, there's that. But either way, yeah, I can believe that it did appeal to a foreign audience, is what I'm saying, was my point. And so... They have this new thing where they want to autopilot the um, Jaegers, um, but they're on a fence about it, so they're going to the press conference where they are going to present it to them, and then they're going to put it to a vote and decide how they're going to, um, if they're going to proceed with the project. And that's when shit hits the fan. Yeah, because out of absolutely nowhere, then comes the mysterious rogue Jaeger, <laughs> which is really actually cool. That was like the first time I was like, oh my god, something's actually happening. <laughs> yeah, all right, you know what, let's, 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 let's break it, let's cut it at that scene and then continue on because that's going to be a long-ass explanation. So yeah. Um... At this point in the movie, I'm accepting what they're giving me. That me. Like, honestly, when I saw this movie, when he was being a little gutter punk, traveling from mansion to broke down fucking mansion, I was like, who fucking... Did, where? Michael Bay, are you behind the curtains? Oh like, <laughs> like oh come on. Goodness. Everything screamed Michael Bay about that moment. He was like, you know, like being all cool and had like women around and he was like being slick. Like, that was scream, Michael Bay. Even to the point where she was in a little scrapper and was running away from fucking uh, Giant Jaeger, dude. <laughs> hey, 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 okay. Okay, Here, here's the difference, though. Scrapper wasn't, like, an offensive stereotype and didn't pee on the other Jaeger, though, okay? <laughs> so... No, and I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure he's like, Nah, man! No, nah, this, man, this man's messed up, man! Oh, man! And then another Jaeger who was Japanese, Oh, yes, I am Japanese! And then another guy came out who was white. Ah, like, Andale, Andale. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Domo arigato, Mr. Roboto. And then, <laughs> and, then, and then a chick comes out with huge boobs in like almost nothing. And it's just like, ah, you know, and, and then explosions everywhere. Just nothing but explosions. <laughs> it's true. It was, it was like a, it was Michael Bay light. Uh, I kind of see that a little bit. Yeah, the, the, uh, I mean. I, I don't know. A little, a little, a light. You yeah, see, not... I, what what really stood out to me was the costumes were just like very underwhelming. They put him in like this eccentric ish robe for no reason, because... <laughs> and I'm just like, are you trying to nod to the awesome fucking? No, uh... no they weren't. What was that? They weren't. <laughs> They were. They were trying to be. He was a little gutter punk who was basically oh. getting what he can get. And he was Were you going to say a little nod to Ron Perlman's crazy eccentric golden jacket character from the first movie? Right, like to just the costume design in the first movie was uh, awesome. Uh, no. Yeah, it, it was. Hell no. Like, that was what? Like, that was like hell. No, we're talking about the first movie. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about like when I saw the costumes, that's where I was knew that this movie was lost to me. Because... <laughs> When the first movie, you could tell that they was highly influenced by the anime that it was based off of. Based on that, it yeah. was it was both practical but kind of like stylistic. Like, oh, I see where they're coming from. But they was like wearing kind of like normalish, bullshitty clothes. Even to like when they went to the base and they were wearing like their new pilot outfits. I was like, yo, nah, man. Yeah, yeah that I, was one. I that... Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, I felt that way a little bit about their suits. Like, I'd have to compare, like, again, it's been a while since I saw Pacific Rim, but I felt like their costumes looked more like something I expected at a convention for someone cosplaying as Jaeger pilots. <laughs> when I look at them, I'm like, eh. But again, it's been a while, so I don't remember exactly what their outfits looked like in the first one, but I still feel like they looked, like, more genuine. Yeah. Like, I mean, the first one... Go ahead. The first one, that one, that was one of my favorite parts of the movie, just the costume design, even down to like that freaking sweater that he was wearing when he was working um, in Alaska or whatever the hell yeah, he was. It, it was just so cool. It just felt like they were 
they made a culture. You know what I mean? They it had, was like they had an aesthetic, exactly, and an like old they, fashioned anime aesthetic. And which they did not stick true to to this one. I felt like at all. I felt like they were a pale imitation of what they were. Yeah, so when I saw him in that role, I was just like, stop. What are you doing, bro? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah. But, yeah um, At that point, I'm just like, all right, this movie's clearly not going for the same type of situation, but that's okay. They said it literally the first sentence they said, oh, if you were expecting this, don't, because I'm not my dad. I'm not my father. <laughs> I, I don't like my father. Oh, I have daddy issues. Look at me. Oh, look at me. <laughs> that accent. <laughs> oh. His accent was good, though. Like, seriously. I, that's how I felt. It's like, yeah, you have daddy issues. And then when... Okay, let's let's move on. Unless you guys got something to say. Because I, I want to talk more about that. Nah, uh, let's keep going. All right. <laughs> they, were at the pre- they were at the conference when the black uh, yeah. suit uh, so... edge lord... They were going there, and everything seemed to be okay. Um, they landed in. They got dropped from the helicopters or whatever, and they was just cool. They were trying to, they were bantering with each other because they had some gripes. They have, like, a little bit of history, I guess. And <clears throat> then this Jaeger comes from the water, and it starts attacking it was pretty cool actually and mako died i mean it yeah she to put it simply she fucking died in a helicopter and um they were trying to track where the jaeger was they thought that she was trying to give them a clue but the clue led to a dead end and no no (laughs) well uh, actually wait did it yeah, they went to the old base from the original movie. Like yeah, the, that's and right. Then, but, like, but then they found the Jaeger there. No, it found them. Like, it came but to I them. Mean, right, but I mean, it was still in that area. You know, that's actually kind of confusing anyway, because it's like, why was it even in that area to begin with? Yeah. Like, I don't I know don't, what I'm that was about. feel the connection there anyway that you know c- can i take the helm for just a second please the, we yeah. insist. Uh, okay because yeah so like they they get the clue like they're like oh it, well she she sent a message and they're like trying to decrypt it and they're like oh we thought she was trying to send something like what kind of kite or something about a kaiju and then it's like this is the base they go to the base they fight the jaeger that's called obsidian fury and they have the big climatic battle and they're able to like beat it. But like the whole thing felt rushed to me because like, I really liked obsidian fury a lot, but then it's like, then immediately it's like, Oh, we're fighting it again within like 10 minutes. And then the battle's over. Um, and they open it up to a really cool part that I thought was like, was really going to go somewhere more. And they rip open the cockpit. And instead of like a person or two people being in there, it's a kaiju brain yeah, controlling it. And it's like the whole thing is like half kaiju, half Jaeger. Yeah. It's and kaiju it's that's like, all split in with the, the building, the built, the hardware. Yeah. And I really like, they seemed like they were kind of going somewhere with it in the movie. And then they just kind of dropped the ball Actually, <laughs> you thought they uh, dropped the ball at that part? I thought it made yeah. sense. It was a precursor no. to what will happen later on in the movie. But I felt uh-huh. like I, I agree with you that they dropped the ball. That you have this cool ass rival mech, and it turns out that it's not gonna make a reprise or anything. One, uh, and two, like how many people can make such a flawless looking mech that they couldn't put two and two together? Yeah. What? He's it's, saying that it was clear who built who built it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was another thing I was wondering. Like, how did they not know where it came from? Because I'm pretty sure they have probably on file how many people could make something like to that extent and right. that type of powered. You know, like that wasn't just like oh, some random Jaeger like the girl made at the beginning. Like this is obviously an arm to the teeth 
like death machine. Yeah. You know. Why do you think they dropped the ball on that part? It's it wasn't exactly Obsidian Fury. Like I I was a little disappointed that the the Jaeger didn't do a little bit more in the movie. Mm. But the part that really upsets me is they they open up with this really cool idea of the Jaeger tech like fused with kaiju, which then leads into the later part in the movie. But that whole idea doesn't do a whole lot in the movie. I guess like, that's true. Like there, there was only one that was that fused with it. Well, I mean, okay. Um, I'm trying to remember what happened after that part. So they, um, they showed that the guy was like, no, that wasn't, that was like, like, like towards like the climax of the movie. He came back because here's the thing. They started getting suspicion that the show company, because they're making drones and they're kind of like, man, we're traditional and you guys are making drones, some desk jockeys and some whatever, right? And they had a little, you know, jockeying, pissing contest about that whole jazz. But they were like, hey, um, we're, we're kind of suspicious about the woman who making these drones and shit. So can you uh, help us out, Newton, or Newt, as they call him? And he's like, oh, yeah, I'll help you out. And he was trying to work in collaboration with that other doctor and shit. Yeah. Trying to figure shit out. And then we find out the other doctor was, like, (laughs) holding a kaiju and, like, connecting with it. Yeah, he was uh, jumping with it, the brain jump. Yeah. And so he had gotten taken over by... He's basically kind of brainwashed i guess um yeah ever since the first movie when both of the doctors did the the their brain jump in with the kaiju like it kind of like rem a remnant of it kind of like stayed over in him so it kind of like controlled him yeah because the the whole premise behind is the connection goes both ways you know yeah the whole yeah the whole thing was, like, they kind of, like, was, like, is he or isn't he? Is he part of the team? And he was trying to pretend like he was helping out. But it turns out he was the guy all along. Yeah, I did like that part, though. I did. I like the fact that he was corrupted by them. I just didn't like their execution after we found out that he was corrupted by them. I didn't like the execution that they did that in general. I, Why? I agree. It I, makes sense. I think that that is interesting. But what they did with it was grossly uninteresting. <laughs> One, he is an interesting character, but he's not offensive. But if he was, if he went full hog on like having a chip on his shoulder about not being taken seriously and being bitched by that uh, one Chinese uh, <laughs> CEO, it would have felt better. I didn't feel the grudge. I didn't feel. The anger. I just felt he that... He didn't feel a grudge, though, because he was working one over on them. He... It wasn't the other way around. He was. He he was like, yo, they don't appreciate me. They don't appreciate us. That's mm-hmm. how he was brainwashed. He was like, there was a little inkling of resentment for how he was treated and how he was seen, mm-hmm. you know? That's why he was, he was brainwashed. So he was there, but you can tell that he had resentment. But it wasn't as... You can feel it. You know, he was still the jokey fucking character, but not even in an interesting way like like you know Loki was. Like he was a <laughs> he was villain, he was villainous and he was kind of like, you know, a jokey character, but he you could see and feel that he was raging and he had like a serious intent. One. Two, you got Gel like Del Toro, the guy who creates monsters and creatures and all these type of mythical cool ass beings, you know, like fuck a fishman like Kaiju said, and you couldn't fucking put any prosthetics on Charlie fucking Day. You couldn't make him have like a fucking six eyes slowly morphing. You couldn't have him have like a cool, like even nodding slightly to anime, having like a cool ass mask or like something similar to what the fucking Juan Perlman character had to hide the fact that he is corrupted. That would have been fucking cool. And when it revealed, you could have like changed him more gradually. That's called interesting writing, both visually and conceptually. But they did literally fucking nothing but had Charlie Day. Whoa, I'm Charlie Day. Whoa, you can't beat my guys. Ooh, like that. What? 
I was so yeah. underwhelmed by the villain, like by him. He's supposed to be the main guy. He's supposed to be the brains behind the whole thing. He's supposed to be like the fucking Doctor Robotnik of this shit, Doctor Fucking Wily. And this guy wasn't barely anything. I was like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't know about like visually with him, but I really do think that his personality should have been. It should have done a one eighty more. Because, yeah, it felt like more like his personality was there, but just a little darker. Yeah. Sometimes, like, I feel like if he just switched from that goofiness to a very serious and very, like, cold tone, it would have made for a better, like, thing. Like, there was, like, almost, like, no emotion in him or something. Yeah, like you how know, the actual of... aliens are. Yeah, like, something, yeah, something like that. Because most of the time, I was just expecting... Danny DeVito to come in with the rest of cast from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia and then to say <laughs> something like the gang defends the world against kaiju or something like that. <laughs> like, I... I, Yeah, it's... Uh, it wasn't like... I didn't have as big of a problem with his character. My biggest problem was just, like, the end result. Like, so, yeah, so, like, he, he turns out he's evil and basically says, I'm just going to, like, I'm just going to destroy the world now um, and launches a program. So all the drones that they have everywhere basically turn into all the drones have, like, a core inside of them that essentially are part kaiju. Right. So, like, all of the robots, all the Jaegers are turning into, like, half kaiju Jaeger monstrosities and just going to town on everything. Yeah, trying that, to open up the portal. That part was so awesome to me, but I felt like they screwed up on... <sighs> I think I'm starting to, like, understand and get more spoiled to certain people doing good cinematography. Like, <laughs> like there is definitely some stuff that could have made it feel more um, bleak than it was. Like, I... have I... either of you seen... Avon Galleon at all? Yes. End of Avon Galleon? No. Uh, no. yeah, I have. I've, I've, it's been a while. It was really weird. Oh yeah, no, no. It, it all of Avon Galleon is well, <laughs> a lot of it is. But the, like the the movie end one, right? You've oh, seen that movie? one? No, I didn't see any movies. Go ahead, please. Okay. Well, it was like it was the. It's the first movie that they did. It was called The End of Evangelion, like where the base gets attacked and everything, and it's like the end. Mm -hmm. um, the the Jaegers kind of reminded me of that because in that uh, in that show they had like other Ava units that they mass produced, and they were all white, and they became like these monsters, and like that's kind of like what I saw with the Jaegers. I was like, oh, I wonder if they're trying to like take some of End of Evangelion style, but like the <laughs> The problem was, like, in the end of, end of Evangelion, they made them feel like real monsters. Like, and right. it felt, like, really bleak. Like, oh, God, how are they even going to destroy these things? But in this one, like, they solved the problem within, like, 15 minutes. <laughs> took yeah. them out. And I'm like, okay, I get the fact that they're, like, breaching the portals trying to get kaiju through. Because mm -hmm. they got, like, three whole kaiju through the portal. But I'm like, you didn't even really need that. Like, literally, these things could have been the end-all, be-all enemies in in the movie. And because if they're, like, partially kaiju, they could have become these more kaiju-looking Jaegers yeah. or something. You know, you didn't have to bring... Like, you could have brought other kaiju, I guess, but I feel like they could have solved the problem of building up to, like, more enemies when each of the individual Jaegers could have become their own weird kaiju hybrids. Yeah, I, I thought um, the execution in that, I like the idea. I actually, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, like, I like the whole idea of that. And when that whole Obsidian Fury came, where there was like a, a black uh, Jaeger going around doing shit, and you turn out that there was a brain and shit. I like the idea of maybe they were going for more of an Evangelion feel where, like, they're mechs, but they feel like fucking monsters, you know? Right. And I, honestly, that's why I was, like, I liked it when he was turning into, like, those, like, like when they were turned to, like, uh, kaiju hybrids of Gagers looking like the Arbiter for fucking Halo. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought that was like, okay, this is getting interesting. But then he went right back to fucking kaiju, you know? I think that... Yeah, it's like, if you're gonna... 
Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I was just going to say, like, I I feel like if you're going to go that route and go into a new new territory like that, you should just go in all the way, balls to the wall, and just, like, explore it as crazily as possible, you know? Instead of just, like, going back to the old, like, yeah, you didn't have to just come back and just be like, oh, there's just three kaiju. It's like, what you had right there was just enough, you mm. know, to... I think that if, okay, so the actual drones, I thought that they were just drones and they were under his control. I thought the only things that were actually um, part kaiju was those little balls at the end that fused with them. Because when they shut down the, when she figured out how to get past his breach or or when she breached his hack or whatever, they were just, they just shut down. Well, yeah, like the, the core that the kaiju part was, came from, they basically all exploded in Uh, each one of them. I see. And yeah, yeah, so it basically just like blew up the brain of each mech, but like they were still infused with kaiju. Mm. And you could have just, like, gone with that idea that, like, because we're already in a world where there's giant monsters and crazy mechs that can move that are, like, 5,000 tons, you know, you could have just gone with the fact that somehow the DNA is starting to mix and spread and, like, this one grows, like, really big forearms, this one gets, like, four different arms, this one has, like, spikes growing out of its back. More kaiju-ish. Yeah, yeah, each one could have had its own unique traits, like, after a while, like, becoming more monstrous but I, also having like mech parts too. yeah i do agree with that but then you know the fact that it like you said was all that crisis was over in 15 minutes uh, uh, <laughs> yeah it's like like honestly that's what i thought they was going for because when i saw that uh obsidian fury i thought they got their hands on the what you call one of their jaegers and through the rift or something. Because one... Actually, they did go through the rift, and I thought they were just using it against them, you know? Yeah. So... Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's what I thought, too, a little bit. Yeah. You would think that... I think what would have been cool to do is... Since all of these things were actually being remotely piloted, if the people who were remotely piloting them was also, like, corrupted by, you know, being few... Like synced with the kaiju as well because it was just i don't know they could have did just a lot of different things but i think that would have been cool because it would have had a whole entire organization against these people and it would have been much more threatening Oh, Other so you, than, oh, we fucked up. So you say, let's try to fix it. So you're saying, like, Charlie Day's character get them to be jumping with the brains by, like, unknowingly yes, and then having exactly. them being uh, corrupted by the Arbiters? Exactly. Or, sorry, not the Arbiters. What is it? The the Precursors. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry. They, <laughs> they're they a lot like the fucking Arbiter. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah. You know, actually, in Halo, that later we turn out that there were aliens called Precursors, so you could just say they just stole everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's how I was. Uh, I was feeling about it. It's uh, it's like like Lenny said, like they could have had like things like that. In my personal opinion, what I thought this movie highly lacked and kind of dropped the ball in, which in my opinion really fucking annoyed me. The more I thought about it, mm. um. You notice how we've been talking about this movie and we have yet to talk anything about any of the fucking characters because they're so fucking boring? <laughs> have you noticed that? We haven't talked about the Russian chick. We haven't talked about Amari who built the fucking mech because they were fucking boring. Every That's the whole issue. The characters, the little pissant, snot-nosed, little teenage brats were fucking boring. They weren't even, like, cool teenagers, like, in Evangelion, dealing with teen, like, yo, we're child soldiers. They were, like, unrealistically fucking gung-ho. I like the little dialogue that she said when she called her an asshole in Russian or whatever. No, she, I think she was like, kiss my ass. Yeah, kiss my ass or something. That was cute. 
yeah, ooh, that little little uh, character thing. But it's like, dude, man, I felt like one. It, it's funny how in the last movie, even though everyone was like barely seen, they had way more characters and just being around than any of those little piss ants did. We're just existing. One. Well, and two, uh, the fact that they, the guys in the first movie, who literally just was constantly fighting an onslaught of fucking kaiju because it was a j- damn job, you know, fucking like lost and died, adding stakes to the story, you know, because everything was about to fucking end. These kids had literally one motherfucker die. In the whole fucking movie, you had like what six, seven fucking characters, and you had one fucking person, a part of what a three person mech die. Fuck that shit, dude. Well, that <laughs> you would think they've been trying so hard to advance their technology, so that makes sense. But what I will no, say is that the as little as those characters were in the first movie. They did make a bigger impression than these kids did, and they had much more screen time. Pretty much. But that being said, what happened was we find out the other doctor was bad, and he is on the kaiju side. He opens up a portal. Three kaiju get back. Three kaiju get out, and they, uh, they are all heading to Mount Fuji or whatever um, because they're going to go and suicide bomb and blow up the earth. Or blow up a hole, have like a, a portal. Yeah. And which will what, terraform the whole fucking earth or something? Exactly. Shit? I don't know. And, and terraform the whole planet because we find out in this that kaiju blood is highly uh, combustible. What is the word? Combustible, reactable, reactive. Re- something like that yeah reactive or whatever and so the kaiju i meant the jaegers go and they go to try to stop them and they stop them yeah you know how they <laughs> stopped them they literally dropped their fucking jaeger from outer space doing a mega like like what fist punch from the like atmosphere you know what i was fucking underwhelmed <laughs> You know, like, how can you drop a giant robot from space to kill a super, like, super kaiju and not, like, I was underwhelmed. I'm not gonna lie about, like, by all that. Like, um, I was grossly disappointed in, that was the main appeal. Tell us how you really feel, Recliner Rider. I'm about to rip this one a new one. You see that... Giant robot about to punch the shit out of that kaiju. That's me punching the shit out of this fucking movie. <laughs> Listen, this whole that whole thing about the movies is like, yo, the battles and shit. And yeah, they did a little bit more than like the other ones, but it just felt like gimmicky. All their fighting felt fucking gimmicky, you know. Like in the old movie. Yeah, they they were fighting and they died and they barely got to show off, showcase like any of their moves. But it didn't feel gimmicky. It felt like you know this is our life, this is life and death. We gotta do this. It's our fucking job. And like, it felt I felt the weight of that in this movie. They're like, okay, guys, let's mighty morph and kick their ass. And they fought. <laughs> <laughs> they fought them, and I was, I didn't feel anything when they were fighting. And you know what? The saddest fucking part was the reason that one, literally one fucking kid died in the whole movie was because they were like, you know what? Let's take him. And they're like, don't do it. Oh, we're going to do it. And like, oh, the consequences. One person died because you didn't listen to what we said. It's like, where's the fucking random? Marco died. She wasn't piloting a mech. They, they were cyberized attacked. Uh, it's like the whole thing was this man it's in the like I said comparing to the old movie and I know it's like hey this is its own movie no it's a fucking sequel and the sequel is supposed to be like an advancement on the premise because you got time you got history and shit like that I don't know Age of Ultron 
Yeah. <laughs> but they have many other sequels, and they're culminating into one big-ass movie. Uh-huh. But, uh, like I said, you have history and shit, right? And the fact that these snot-nosed little pieces of shit survived, and one died, was just stupid to me. You it's heard like, it here first, guys. Where Klein and Ryder wants to kill all the babies. Yes, please. Murder them. <laughs> at least I feel, feel... Oh my goodness, at least, I, at least I will fucking feel the, that, like, oh man, there's stakes. Oh, except for the, like, Mugo, like Mulligan fucking... Oh yeah, if they get to Mount Fuji, the whole world is going to be destroyed. You know what I mean? Like, Professor Kaiju said, it wasn't fucking bleak. Oh, okay. The first movie, yeah, they had, like, a heart to it, but you felt like, yo... This is an ongoing battle, and we're constantly fucking fighting a barrage of fucking kaiju, and there was certain type of, like, yo, man, we don't know if we're gonna live or die. You know, the first fucking scene, his brother got fucking murdered. So, guys, essentially, what Recliner Rider is saying is the first one was Sword Art Online, season one. This this movie, Sword Art Online, season two. No. <laughs> It's, don't even, don't even. Because at least, at least the first movie fucking was like, was all there. It made sense. It got it right. So our outline was like there and it was fun. But when you go back and look at it, it's kind of stupid. You yeah. know? I did. Yeah. I, mean, I think that, I think <laughs> this Sword movie... Art Online was overrated, but I feel like, when I hear people talk about it, that's what it reminds me of. Yeah, but th- but that's a bad comparison because the first movie was legitimately good. They knew what they were doing. They had they had they set the scene with his brother dying. They set the scene with like yo kaiju come all the fucking time. We always we may live we might die. This is a life. It's a living. Fucking like well that was the, the whole cast, that but, is the whole point though. The whole thing is there is no longer a threat. They got this shit under control. Even if they come, they had preparations both it with Jaegers, advanced Jaegers, new clean and shiny Jaegers, and with the whole initiative of the uh, you know, ones that don't require the piloting. So it's been years and it's no longer a threat, so why would it feel like, oh gosh, Everything is dire because we've been dealing with it for so long. That that's the opposite of what the movie was supposed to be. You know what? If I wrote the yeah. movie, if yeah, I wrote... recliner, I, I have to agree with Lenny on this one. This is uh, that's uh, yeah. Okay, well, let me spirit, let me spirit both of y'all. Uh, oh in, man! In the chest with my mighty uh, <laughs> opinion spear. All oh, right. Okay. <laughs> One. So, so what you're trying to say is that the first movie is my hero and the second movie is Bleach. <laughs> The tail in a bleach, yes. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, here's what I'm saying, man. All right. I'm trying Please. to say that if you like this movie, fuck you. Okay, you heard it here. <laughs> yeah. you know he, what? He thinks if you like this movie, fuck you. Yeah, exactly. Fuck you guys if you like <laughs> No. All right. Still, all right. still, still like this and comment below. Whatever. Listen, <laughs> like, like. The, you can debate me on this if you want. If I wrote this fucking movie, yeah, all right, you know, war is over. And you and all the great heroes have fucking died defending the earth from an actual fucking threat, all right? I get that. However, you what you got now is fucking children. You got children that never fought. You got children that never been in war. You got children who chase a glorious, glamorous fucking propaganda-filled dream left by their fucking predecessors. You know? Instead of going in, like, the first movie, where, like, oh, we're wide-eyed, let's keep up the propaganda propaganda and, like, let make it all glorious and shiny and shit, you know? How about the kids are like, yo, I want to do this because they're my heroes, my heroes did this, and then when shit hit the fan, how about they act like they're fucking teenagers and, like, we don't know what we're fucking doing. We're, we're, we can make mistakes. We're making mistakes. And our lives are actually and literally in fucking danger. They got world from class time to training. Time. <sighs> okay. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Whatever, but dude, I get it. Do you have anything else you want to say before we move on? 
No, man. God, clearly, you don't, you don't, you don't get what I'm saying. I get what you're saying. You just I just it. disagree. I'm, I'm not even trolling you. Yeah, I wasn't even done what I was saying. Really? But you know, forget it. What? I'm just gonna wrap it up. My opinion is this: they're <laughs> fucking children. The other ones had more fucking training, and they even fucking died. These kids only lost one fucking person, which lowers the fucking stakes. The bad guy was fucking what milk toast boring. Could have even made him more interesting, like uh, Professor fucking Kaiju said, by giving him like a change or something in his character or fucking prosthetics or something, something interesting to fucking look at to make him inter- more of an interesting villain. Fuck, show the woman was way more of an interesting fucking villain than that little piss ant. One, two. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. It was just, it just felt like a neuter, like it. It neutered the whole entire franchise with this one. It was a failure in my eyes. And it was just like every other fucking movie. And it bored the shit out of me. Okay. I respect your opinion. <laughs> How did you feel, Professor Kaiju? <laughs> uh, well, um... Well, I... I felt like a more uh, distilled... Like a, a watered-down version of... Uh, of recliner rider except not as I, look man okay i know that you feel like this is 2014 godzilla for you but like I, the problem is i didn't go into this movie with any expectations which was my problem with 2014 i went in with way high expectations for that movie um i felt that pacific rim uprising uh had a lot of good ideas but just didn't really do anything good with them like they they kind of stuck them in there they worked for a little bit and then they just kind of let them fall. You know, I do agree that I think the kids, I felt like they should have been older than they were. Like, even if they were younger than like maybe the first group of uh, pilots, I feel like they should have been a little bit older. That felt a little off to me. Um, but yeah, I, I felt like this movie was all right to me. It was okay. It was just okay. Like, if you want to go into this movie thinking it's going to be the original, then no, don't. You're going to be very disappointed. You're going to be angry like recliner. <laughs> um, but like, but like, just I don't know. It's it's an okay movie. It, it's just I don't know. I can't. I don't hate it, but I was disappointed. Okay. I so know. I guess how I feel, I feel very similarly to uh, Professor Kaiju here. I I just want to be clear. This was not a a good movie. Especially in comparison to... Alright, let me put it this way. This was not a good movie. This was an even worse sequel. Okay? But, I think that this would appeal to a younger group of kids. And... (laughs) Like, maybe teenagers like 13, 14, 15. And I think that there is some, um, there was some enjoyment out of it. It was an okay movie. Would I watch it again? No. Do I feel like it was worth going to see in the movies? No, especially not in 3D. Um, (laughs) But I would watch it on... Did you see it in 3D? Yes. Um... Oh, I'm so sorry for your (laughs) wallets. Same. Uh... (laughs) But I do, I'd watch it on Netflix. I wouldn't watch it again because I've already seen it. But if it was on Netflix, uh, <laughs> I would be like, okay, I can watch this. You know what? You know what? I, I found a chink in your opinion, Armin. How about this? The kaiju are gone, right? Uh-huh. Okay. And the job is still available. You would think there would be more people applying to this shit like hotcakes. Where you just walk around ceremoniously, you know, because there's no fucking threat. Matter of fact, that would have been even more interesting if they had a character that was like, yo, man, there's no fucking kaiju. This is an easy fucking gig. That would have been fucking interesting. But they didn't, like, they would have had, they should have had more characters and more people die. Then there would be more stakes, like an actual, like. You're right, Recliner Rider. There's a lot that they could have done better and differently. I'm just saying, man. Like, you're right. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You're right. When you you're saying like, yo, they have a whole new tech and they got better shit, and that's why the less people died and shit. Granted, but you would think there'll be even more people trying to get this job when there's when they know the gates are closed. You know what I mean? I hear you. I don't know, man. Yeah, people they all got killed. The job. They were all faceless people that got killed during that initial attack. Yeah, that's why only the kids were left. That makes no fucking sense. All right, let's not get into it. We're wrapping this up, bro. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Um, (laughs) you know what, guys? You gotta love his passion. I'm just saying, man. What? In anime, they know that the older people. This is not an anime. This is not a movie that you like. This is not. They know. This is not directed by that. What's that guy's name? Uh, Guillermo del Toro. This is not directed by him. I know. This does not even have the same character. They don't respect the the, the source he came from. Dude, you. (laughs) They don't respect. Enough, Recline the Rider. Enough from you. (laughs) They don't respect the source. Older people, they know that older people have You have said enough, Recline the Rider. Whatever. The good thing about this movie, that's what we're going to talk about. Oh, yeah. Okay. I like the cliffhanger that they left. Like, the fact that they're going to try to go and attack the uh, aliens. I also liked the weird-ass relationship with the main character and the girl that he liked. <laughs> And I like the fact that the guy um, from the the main character from the first movie is still out there somewhere, and we could potentially see him in the third movie. We're probably not, though. <laughs> oh, okay. If he knows what good from, I just go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Marco, Marco's best decision was dying in that movie. Oh my god! Oh wow. <laughs> So I retain what? my dignity. <laughs> <laughs> what did you like about the movie Recline the Rider? What I like, I but like the de- yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but all right, I'm gonna be less cynical. I like the ideas that they fucked up. I like the I idea- said. I like the ideas that they fucked up. I like the idea of the hybrid between Kaiju and Jaeger. I like the idea. Of uh, Newt, idea of Newt <laughs> fucking being corrupted, she fucking hate the execution. Um, I also what else do I like? I like the design. Uh, shit. Did I like you like some the, of the fact comedy. that the Indian guy died? No, I didn't because it was just one fucking. But person. he died. They had it in them. To kill a kid. It was boring. Kill the Russian chick that she fought. At least she made more of an impact than that piss ant kid. Oh, okay. All what right. else did you like? Uh, I like. I mostly like the ideas, but I like that's. I just feel like I could see the writing that uh, Del Toro and some other people did, but I hated the way they did it. You know, I feel like Del Toro is like, you know, here's a here's here's I'm setting them up, buddy. Uh, go ahead, you knock them down, and then they're just throwing it into the fucking gutter. But, um... Okay. <laughs> so what did you like, uh, Professor Kaiji? <laughs> you know, I, I gotta say, it's almost most of the same stuff that Recliner said. It was a lot of the ideas... The things I love most about this movie were the ideas that they did. I just don't think they really did anything... They didn't do anything exceptional with them. They just kind of like, oh, here's a little idea that leads to something else. I like the fact that the three kaiju like fused into one giant kaiju. Mm-hmm. But but it's just like the thing that was weird was like, okay, but, you know, like the way they did it when he sent out those little mech drones. It's like every time they kind of had a good idea, they just didn't exactly execute it well. And I don't know. It's... I, again, like, I just didn't have the same passionate, like, I didn't, I did not, like, get as upset about it. But there were definitely parts that kind of made me, like, 
hurt inside, you know, sometimes, okay, never mind, we're trying to do good things. Like, okay, so, <laughs> I like, I like the ideas, I like a lot of the ideas, um, I like some of the ideas for characters that they had in there, but they just didn't, we just didn't get, like, a good, like, look at anyone, you know, like you said, just, I don't know. Um, you know what would have been cool? If the, um, Kaiju... You know what would have been a cool way to end this movie? If they weren't able to stop him and the kaiju flooded and they didn't do anything until the next movie. Like, they didn't say, oh, they're going to Mount Fuji or anything like that. If they would have just left left them in shambles. But, um... Or if they didn't just shut down all of those, uh, you know, other, what are they, what are they called? Facilities? No. Like the all drones? Of the, yeah, all of the drones. And the drones were actually able to fuse with the kaiju that came out. That would be really cool. Or. That was, that was something I thought about. They could have just had all of them fuse into one giant kaiju or something. Yeah. Or, uh, or better yet. It would have been cool if they did the whole opening of the gates and killed, like, I don't know, fucking five people. And, like... They killed more than five people. That's why the kids had to run it. Faceless, no-name, uncharacteristics, <sighs> background people. They might as well destroy a city because a lot more people died that way. Um, <laughs> and there are more faceless people there. But, um, what I was saying... I think it would have been cool if they would have, uh, like I said, kill a little bit more people, add the stakes, you know, there's no more kitty gay bullshit. You know, people are going to die. This is war. Uh, and then some of the kaiju, there was more than three kaiju that got out. And they lo- they went to, they were all attracted to an island because they were ordered to go there. And then they would have, like, a cool-ass monster island for a sequel or something. Yeah. So, any any final thoughts? Oh, I also, or- also like the Gundam. I, I wanted to mention that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any final thoughts or opinions? Uh, you guys go first. No, you go first, Recliner Rider. <laughs> All right, well. Well, in closing, I went into this movie, you know, because they were continuing with the story of the first Pacific, Pacific Rim. I was going into this movie thinking, you know, hey, there's a franchise in this. That there's hope that, you know, maybe they can be the next big thing like superhero movies. That there will be more giant robot movies and they get it right. Kind of like the renaissance of uh, kaiju movies now, you know. With Rampage coming out and all the Colossals and Godzilla and King Kong. There's a lot of those. You rarely see any giant fucking monster fighting robot movies. And I went into this hoping that even though Del Toro wasn't helming the the director's seat that there was hope for this franchise and they just shat all over my hope okay that's fair <laughs> <laughs> i <laughs> here's my final thoughts don't go see this movie in theaters go see um Something ready else. player one <laughs> <laughs> see anything else go see uh, Tyler Perry go see stop <laughs> go see Ready Player One see it was really fun and geeks will love it see. and if you're a geek and you like you're listening to us aren't you <laughs> also go see Midnight see Sun instead of this please <laughs> Midnight Sun anything go ahead <laughs> anyway um yeah the movie was okay but it, it's not worth the theaters it's not worth seeing it twice so when you go, when you eventually do see it, um, just really take it all in because you're not going to want to see it again. And if you like this movie, I'm sorry about this because. <laughs> yeah, we really want to know your this opinion. Is, this is not. <laughs> we want to we hear Recliner your Recliner Rider is usually not such a, a villain. <laughs> But either way, um, yeah, it was an okay movie overall is what I'm saying. Um, and it wasn't terrible. It just wasn't good. I'm more of an anti And it's hard to, um, it's really hard to Watch. go in with high expectations. Stop. 
You're being really rude. <laughs> Sorry. It's just, I thought it was funny. Go ahead. My bad. It's really hard to go into a movie that you have been waiting for for years and that you have extremely high expectations for and that um, you spend 3D ticket money on and be disappointed. <laughs> hmm. um, <laughs> how about you? <laughs> For all of you out there, don't think of this movie as Pacific Rim. Think of this <laughs> as a company that really, really wants a lot of money and decided to take the corpse of Pacific Rim and pull it over <laughs> itself and be like, hey, kids, it's Pacific Rim. Sure is. It sure does look like Pacific Rim. Please give us your money. Yeah, they did it quite a they But did. It's, it's also not as bad as that either. Now, yeah, it's, it's, it was an okay movie. It's an okay movie. Don't go into expecting anything amazing. Kids Just, are going to love this, yo. I stand by that. I, uh, probably, I, probably. I have more faith in children. Sorry. Dude. <laughs> if you, did you see Black Nerd's review? Uh, hell no, because I don't watch reviews before I do my review. Yeah, all right. So I seen the review and um, he really enjoyed it. And I'm just like, how the fuck could you have enjoyed this? He likes Power Rangers. I get it. I get because that. Black and, Nerd is really fun and he has a good heart and he doesn't let hate, much hate get into him whatsoever. He's just yeah. always ill about everything. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> basically, I, I mean, I felt the movie was okay. Like, when we left the movies, Recline Riley wasn't all, spitting all that big talk like he is now. But he's had a week to <laughs> sit on it. Let it fester. <laughs> yeah. Him. I had two weeks to sit on it. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, <laughs> he's had some time to reflect, and I wasn't expecting him to come at the movie like that. But... You heard it from him, you know, just when, how he feels about when, it. When you sit on something long enough, you know, you might get hemorrhoids, and this is what that movie gave me. You know, Pacific Tent Rim, oh, Pacific oh, Rim God. 2, Rim Job. Yeah. Rim. <laughs> Pacific's Rims got his rim all lumpy. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so... Pacific Rim up yours. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, you beat me on the pun and words. <laughs> so yeah, um, take I mean, take your kids to see this. Don't go to a date with this. <laughs> don't do don't go on a date for this movie. <laughs> take your kids to see this because I I still feel like a lot of kids um, would really like this. It yeah. was it was cool. If they need a nap. It had big <laughs> monsters. It had cool kids. It had some kids cursing. You know, <laughs> cool kids. <laughs> you can the barely kids are cool. You can barely call them cool. You can barely even call them kids. You can barely even call them human with well, their stiff ass performance. Well, that's what I'm saying. They're... <laughs> they're... <laughs> wow. <laughs> they're, they're, they're they're pretty much a personification of characters. Uh, character. Uh, what is it? Stereotypes. Archetypes. I'm the badass Russian. That's all I am. I'm the smart teen girl with potential. Do I have character development? No. <laughs> they do. They become friends, I think. That was as forced as Clark Kent's kiss with Lois Lane in the end of Man of Steel. Oh, oh call back to the last podcast. <laughs> if you like that podcast, go check out the other one. <laughs> if you want to get that reference. <laughs> Any hoodle. Um, So, I mean, guys... We just didn't love the movie, unfortunately. I, fucking hate it. I think that's overall the the gist I'm getting here. Two of us thought it was okay. One of us really hated it, and that's okay. He doesn't have to keep saying it. It's funny because I. But I used to we think it was are okay. gonna go ahead. I know you did used to think it was okay. What you know? Here today, gone tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Um. Just like my faith in this franchise. Wow. <laughs> I, I would go see the next movie. Uh, I'm excited. No, no thank you. <laughs> wow. Like, I'm sorry, but if this is what they did with the second one, 
I no, not 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 no. I would go see it on a Tuesday or like the matinee when it's cheaper. I would go see it. I would go see it if they said it was directed by Guillermo del Toro again. Then I might be like, okay, maybe. Definitely. Uh, But I I would see it on an airplane fight (laughs) because I'm forced to. You are so. (laughs) You are on ten today. (laughs) Um. All right. Well, they wouldn't go see it again, but. I mean, I don't know what to say at I'm this point. It. Let's just start the plugs. I'm just saying, it was like the end of Ghostbusters 2016 where it's like, oh no, Zool's coming. Oh no, you're right, no more. <laughs> no. I like that movie. <laughs> I laughed my ass off when they said that. Like I said, just I'm like, an easy sell though in terms of movies, but whatever. Um, So, where can we find you? Oh, me. Um, uh, I think right now I'm in my apartment. Uh, did you want to address? Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah, um, I'm Professor Kaiju. You can find me on YouTube at YouTube slash whatever. Just type in Professor Kaiju into YouTube and you'll find my channel, Professor Kaiju. Yes. I'm also on Facebook with my Professor Kaiju page and Twitter at Professor Kaiju 101. Um, and that's you... P-R-O-F dot Kaiju. Yes. Prof Kaiju. Yeah, I just wanted them to know. No, yeah, you did. <laughs> we you did. Yeah, no. <laughs> you know, but for his content, you know, he oh, analyzed boy. ferocious beasts, those fists and creatures from the east. He'll help you understand those big bad monsters we from Japan. Kaiju. Professor Kaiju. <laughs> so, check him out. Well, you can find us at... Wait, you know, did he finish his plug? Oh, did you finish your plug? Yeah, I'm, I'm done. I don't have much to All right. Well, you can find us at... The Geek Beacon on most Geek social Geek media Geek outlets. Geek that's Geek Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, and Instagram. That's right, The Geek Beacon. And YouTube. Oh, uh, yeah, and We YouTube. just made a channel. Yeah, so, you But know, nothing's on it yet. Yeah, But so, it will be by the time this goes up, probably. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> uh, and then we also stream we on Twitch you. as Geek, Geek Beacon 3. You know, if you show up, we show up. We play old games and sometime new. Uh, you can also uh, find all this stuff in our bio on our SoundCloud page and click to the links if you don't feel like typing it up. Yeah. So, yeah, Professor Kaiju does, you know, super cool reviews and unboxings, all kaiju related stuff. And uh, he's pretty awesome. He's funny. So, make sure you go support him if you're we listening to King this King not King on King. his thing <laughs> oh, okay. uh, and if you are listening to his things you know subscribe hit that little ring bell yeah if you're listening on his thing yeah, so, uh, <laughs> smash that like button uh, ring the, the notification dingly dangle and um, we got uh, subscribe King. because I'm very bold <laughs> <laughs> alright guys so until next time uh, fuck this movie lights out <laughs> wow <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Turn the lights off on this fucking franchise. Lights hey, out. So if you I, know, I was, I was like, you let's end on good stuff and you just you fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs>